icon in comedy, a fighter for freedoms, an accomplished entertainer, and a pervert. You've got problems, he's got problems. You've got questions, he's got answers, some of which are good. Call now, 866-WOW-1WOW. That's 866-969-1969. This is The Jim Norton Show. Good evening. <clears throat> it is me. Thank you for tuning in, if anybody is listening. I never think anybody is listening. I think I say that every week. But I've been, uh, I've been watching this, this Ken Burns documentary on Netflix. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I just go on Netflix because there's just nothing I want to see on TV. And there's always something good on Netflix. And it's called, like, Cancer... The Emperor of All Maladies. And I'm like, all right, that's probably going to be very depressing. But then I realize that there's a whole bunch of two-hour episodes. But when Ken Burns does a documentary, holy fuck, does he really do a long one. So, you know, a lot of it is about childhood leukemia and just really depressing. But I've been watching it. I kind of just feel grateful to be, you know, alive. Like, you watch something like that. And I'm like, well, how come I never had kids? Like, why, you know, not that seeing kids with cancer makes you want to have them, but I'm like, you know, I think the reason I don't have kids is I'm too afraid of, like, having a kid and they die. Like, that's probably what it is. Deep down, I'm too afraid of having a kid and not being able to, to pass, you know, to stop him from dying if he's sick. At least that's what I tell myself. Right as I'm talking to you, my accountant sent me a fucking, he sent me a, a potted, Plant. It's a bunch of little cacti, cactus plants, but ow, uh, I don't know how to water them. How much fucking water do you put on these things? I have no idea. So I have to call him and uh, see if he knows how to take care of them. I'm sure he doesn't. Ronnie in California, what's up, buddy? What's up, Jim? I, I heard that you're going to go to the McGregor fight. I wanted to know what you thought of Conor McGregor. I'm hoping Dana can <clears throat> get me tickets. But uh, I like Conor McGregor. I mean, I want to see Jose Aldo win because I prefer him. I, I just like him. He's you know one of my favorite fighters. But look, I think McGregor is better for the sport as far as the sport growing because, you know, Aldo's kind of a boring guy. He's a nice guy. and He's a soft-spoken guy. <clears throat> but McGregor's a real shit talker and charismatic. So if you're the UFC, I'm guessing you're rooting for McGregor. But personally, I'd like to see Aldo win. I mean, I think McGregor's good, but I think Aldo is better. Yeah, he's almost got like a comedian's wit, you know what I mean? Does that just that just trips me out to hear him talk? Like reminds me of Chael Sonnen in, in his delivery and stuff. Just always got a fast thing to say. I thought that the comedians would be really on board with him, but I've heard you kind of he kind of rubs you the wrong way, right? Well, you know, again, with it, when it comes to a loud shit talker, I either want to see them be great or get the shit beat out of them. So I, I've never met McGregor. And I've only met Aldo once. Sometimes it comes down to if I don't really have any personal feelings, I like Aldo because he's a Brazilian leg kicker and I love those guys. And um, it's just, you know, if I met someone and they were pleasant, I find a reason to root for them. Yeah, right on, man. Okay. All right, brother. I love the show, man. Thanks, <clears throat> thanks for the call. Thanks very much. Matt in New Jersey has a question about stand-up. Hey, what's up, Jimmy? <clears throat> How are you? Good, man. Uh, so, yeah, I, I called you probably like a year ago. I was living in my car and... Los Angeles, and you gave me the advice to come back to New Jersey, so that's what I did. But uh, I, I just I, like about stepping on your lines, and how do you like when you were early on starting off? Like, how did you get all the lines crisp and clear? You know, well, it's just from doing it. I mean, it's literally like doing anything else. The more times you say it, the more times you just pick up the energy of the laugh it's going to get, or it's getting, and you know when the laugh is fading out, and you can jump into the next one. You know, it's all timing. This is timing is everything. That just comes with experience. So there's yeah, no. Yeah, I feel like that's so hard to get though at like open mics. You know what I mean? There's no, but there's no like, uh, like you know, I can't get like a read on the audience because it's all comics. Yeah, I've yeah. done some guest spots, and the get the guest spots I've done have been killer. But to get to that next point, I, you know what I mean? Like I can't keep getting, you know, the mics are just rough. Yeah, I've heard. Um... But that's the only way to do it is just the timing of being on stage. It really is all you can do. Uh, your experience grows the more you do it. 
And, and I think it's important just to continue doing it. And you will eventually get that down, dude. I mean, you never have it perfect. None of us do. But the more you do it, the better it will get. So just realize it comes with time. So every time you have a shitty night, you're still getting one step closer towards your goal because you're, you were on stage. And what, I, uh, just one more question. What, with your material, I know your material is like unbelievable. Like what, what did your family like start to think when they first heard that? Did you try and like shadow them from it or did you like tell your parents and your, I know, you know, I mean like your friends from Jersey. Well, my parents are pretty open-minded and liberal about that kind of stuff, which is very lucky for me. I got lucky with my, my folks. But again, I, they, I made them wait seven years before they ever saw me. Seven years. So they didn't see me until 1997 when I was headlining the Stress Factory. So, I mean, I think by then they kind of had an indication. But I, I always look at it like, look, I don't perform for my mom and dad. They're just two people. You yeah. know, I, I, have to, I have to make myself first happy and my audience happy. So I want my parents to love it. But if they hated it, I would still do the same thing. So never consider your family when you're writing jokes, okay? Yeah, definitely. It's just with the, you, you know what I mean? I was trying to do like YouTube videos and I didn't want, I was kind of censoring myself a little bit. But yeah, that's right. I just need, you know, just need to not give a shit about that, I guess. All right, buddy. Good luck. Keep doing it. Awesome. Thanks, Jimmy. Hey, James in New Jersey. What's up? What's up, Jimmy? You have a radio question. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, no, I was just curious on, you know, like after the split and everything with uh, Opie and Anthony, why do you think people still listen even though they hate? You know, like you'll see people complaining about the show. They're constantly complaining about Opie, yet they still listen. And, like, I seen somebody on Twitter the other day. I'm not going to say who it is, but, like, the amount of time and effort that he puts in to, like, making pictures and just hating on Opie, and it's like, you're another grown man. Like, why would you even worry about somebody else's life that much, you know? You know, the only thing I, I can think of, because I've used this example before, like, you know, like when Lost was on. When Lost was on, I loved it, and I hated the final season. But I knew where the end was, so I made myself watch it, and there was parts of it that I liked, and I would bitch about it, but I knew when it was ending. But something like Homeland I watched, I loved the first season, and they lost me at one point, and I knew I could never like the show again. So I walked away and never looked back. I, I don't know if it's the fact that radio is so personal, and when people listen to you and love you, they're maniacal, so when they don't like you, they're also maniacal. I, I, I don't really have an answer for that, because I can't see listening to something I didn't like. I just can't see doing it, but they put the energy into it. I, I think sometimes, you, you know, you like having something to do as well. Like, you know what I mean? If you're, if you're um, part of a group that likes something, it's not much different from being part of a group that hates something. You're part of a group. And whether it's Twitter or online or whatever it is, I think people develop these identities that they like. Like, I think they like how they feel when they can be like, hey, I'm... I'm snarky guy or I'm angry guy. And like in, in life, I, it's hard for me to do that because, you know, I get a job and I got to listen to this fucking idiot boss of mine. But here I can express myself the way I want to. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe. I, I don't know. I personally couldn't do it. But um, yeah, don't you think like you, I understand like people are upset about the Anthony thing. But, yeah, I you know, just about listen, it. To, listen to his show or or don't, like just to keep listening and the complaints. And it's like you still you're still listening. It's been over a year. That I don't just, quite get. Yeah, I don't get the obsession you know? for it. But, I mean, again, um, you know, I'm lucky. I'm in a position where I can kind of say what I want. As, I mean, I bash online anonymity uh, because I think that it's needed in some cases. I really do. And I think that at times it's just used for, for absolute cowards to, uh, you know, to, to be who they really want to be but can't be in real life. And that's just kind of a pussy position. But, um, you know... It doesn't hurt us. I mean, if they want to, they can do that. I mean, I, I look, the fact, I would rather, I honestly mean this. I would rather have somebody listen to the show and not like me than ignore the show. But I, I don't get why they, they, they still listen after all this time. But hey, they're welcome to do it. Yeah. All right. That's all. Okay. All right, buddy. Thanks, sir. Uh, oh, Evan in Long Island has some advice for me, which really is needed. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Jim? Hello. Uh, you were asking about cactus and how often to uh, water them? Yeah. Once a month. Uh, how much water? Uh, just make them a little damp. You know, okay. the dishes. Yeah, just do it until it just start, starts pulling up on the top and done. Okay. <clears throat> and that's yeah. enough. 
That's enough. Yeah, that's access. But they're meant to live in a completely arid environment. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me for coughing, folks. I just I drank something that's fucking my throat up. All right. I appreciate yeah. it. No Thank problem. You. Yeah, I was Thank getting in my truck and I asked about tax. I'm like, oh, I'm an arborist. I know these things. Ah, thank you, Evan. Your help is very necessary. Anyone who wants to call in, 866-969-1969. We have people on, but if you want to call, feel free. Thanks, buddy. Uh, let's see here. Um, Kelly in Staten Island. Hi, Kelly. Oh, shit. You actually answered my call. Cool. What's up, sure. dude? Hello. Um, yeah, so I'm calling you. Um, big, long-time listener. Long time. Oh, well, um, thank you. And uh, I love you. Um, but uh, that's not what I'm calling. I am a, I'm definitely an alcoholic. Okay. I am. I um, I'm one of those. It's like this fucked up thing. It's like this functioning. You do. You go to work. You do. You have a really good job. You sure. take care of your family. You, it's like a closet fucking thing. I don't even drink in public um, or family functions or anything because I don't. I want to be always composed, and I don't want to. But I have this witching hour. I call it that. I've called it that several times, where I'm alone, and you know my kids sleep. Um, and that's and your I, reward, right? You treat yourself your little getaway. I. I yeah, I, I don't even know what it is. I, but it's 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 a habit. It's certainly a habit. I've definitely talked to therapists about it. I've been to AA meetings. I've I've been through the gamut. Um, okay. I'm not fucking up my life, but it's still not healthy. Like whatever I'm doing, it's not a healthy thing. Well, it doesn't have to ruin your life for you to stop it. I mean, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to fucking drive into a parade in Oklahoma and kill people yeah. to stop it. You know, I mean, that's what that can happen to anybody. Even if you, you know, you're a mild alcoholic, you can have one too many and fucking hit a, and hit a, and hit a bunch of people crossing the street and kill them and you go to prison. So if it's bothering you, if it's one of those things that you like, it's I, not, you know what? It's, I, I'm married. I have a husband and he's okay. a cop and he's, he works nights. I'm alone a lot. I'm, oh. I'm a working mother. I'm just, um, I'm alone a lot, and it's whatever. It is what yeah. it is. It is what it is. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus Christ. I'm, you, you are obviously having a, uh, a a mental issue with it, like you don't want to do it anymore. So if it's a problem for you, or if it's making you unhappy, or if it's on your mind, why don't you just stop? Try some of those methods you tried but, before. But, you know, but I, I love, why don't you just stop? I really love that. I, I, I would love to just stop. I don't... I, well, what can. I say you it can. is something that happens at, like, this witching... I don't even keep alcohol in the house. I actually have to go buy it. Like, I have to... There's not There's not a little uh, bar in my home or anything yeah, like that. I there's no, yes, yeah. it's a ritual. And it's I, a ritual. I'm sitting there, like, biting my fucking fingernails, like, biting them till they, they're not even there anymore because I don't know what to do with my fucking head. You well, know, like, I'm one just, thing at a like, time. Hold, I'll tell you. Yeah. There's an old expression. I certainly didn't make it up. Uh, bring the body and the mind will follow. Meaning, you're not just going to all of a sudden turn off those tapes. That fucking, you know, for me, it's porn. Like, it's really hard for me not to quote unquote yeah. reward myself jacking off online. Um, yeah. Those tapes don't get turned off. And then one day, hey, it's magically easy. I don't do that anymore because the mentality left, the obsession left. I have to stop doing something. And then it takes a while, but the physical action, you bring the body and then the mind shows up after you. But you got to stop the physical action. It's almost like saying, how do I stop feeling like a fat fuck? You don't just stop yeah. feeling like a fat fuck and then all of a sudden you do the action of losing weight. you got to do the action first. Right. And then you have to realize that the mentality lags behind, but it does come. It will come. The obsession will, will be removed or it will leave um, or it will pass or it will get farther and farther and farther apart. That's how people quit drinking. It's how they quit smoking. It's how they quit heroin. Um, but you have to realize, sure, it's a little hard at first, but it's an addiction. No addiction is easy. So you know you want to do something about it. Stop trying to say, how am I going to, how am I going to, if you want to do something, just take the action and do it. Start the process. Whether it's a therapist or an AA meeting or a fucking, you know, another 12-step group or something. Whatever it is for you. Begin doing that. 
begin the action of not drinking uh, a day at a time is what worked for me and for a lot of other people. And then you will notice like, wow, for the first X amount of time, every night I'm thinking about this and I'm white knuckling it. But then maybe instead of going out and getting the liquor, you pick up the phone and you call somebody who is also in the same boat. And you talk and they talk you through it a little bit. And then you realize, poof, okay, that passed a little bit. Or sometimes they say you eat a piece of chocolate or you just drink something like that's not alcohol and it helps in the moment. But there's plenty of things to do to help get through those moments and they will become fewer and further between, all right? Okay, all right, cool, dude. Thank yeah. you. All right, good luck. Bye. Um, let's see here. Ooh, Sam in New Jersey, a face-sitting fetish. Hey, Jimmy. I like what she puts her hiding on my face, Sam. <laughs> oh, wait, wrong Sam. What's up? Hey, Jimmy, thanks for taking my call. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of an issue for me now. It used to just be a fetish, but I'll try and keep this as short as possible. I dated a girl for about two years, um, and she was a squirter. And first girl I'd ever been with was squirted. And we used to, she used to sit on my face, and we used to 69, and the only way I could get off was with her like sitting on my face and squirting on my face and now that we broke up it's been like a year since we broke up i don't want anything else from a girl other than to sit on my face like i meet girls on tinder and i'm like emotionally detached i'm antisocial. i don't want to go and get a drink i don't want to date a girl all i want is for a girl to sit on my face and i know that you kind of have the same thing and obviously not to this extent but I know that that's something that you like, so that's why I'm reaching out to you. Yeah, I mean, look, you can't uh, just meet girls and have them sit on your face unless they're prostitutes. I mean, or unless they're just really good eggs. It's one of those things where you're going to have to, like, you know, you're going to have to go out for drinks with them, and you're going to have to do that stuff. It's what you're because what you're looking. I understand being in a relationship and just getting what you want, but you're going to have to realize, like, while you're still dating and you're emotionally detached, maybe it's better to actually just have coffee a few times. Because you already know you can get your face sat on. So maybe it's better to find a connection with somebody or just begin dating them a little bit because then you can get that all the time. But it's just, you're, that's a lot you're asking for, dude. I want to be emotionally detached, meet girls on Tinder, just get my face sat on, and that's it. That's a hard one because a lot of women aren't going to sign up for that. Hey, I just want to meet some guy who hates me or doesn't give a fuck about me and put my asshole on his nose. You know, that's a, that's a lot to ask. Yeah, and I, I've, I've tried the prostitute angle, and even that's kind of like they, I mean, you know, I've talked to a, a couple of friends about it, and they're like, I don't know why you would do that with a prostitute, but it's, yeah. it's, it's just a weird thing for me that, like, I, if I'm watching porn, it, it, I have no interest in any other part of sex. It's just that, and it's like, that's just my zone right now. But uh, yeah, yeah, you have a fetish for it. It's hot. I love it too, dude. I Believe me, I get it. But, uh, yeah. you know, one of those things where... You just realize that's a tall order, what you're asking for. So maybe you could put that out there or go on like alt.com or one of those like sexual websites and tell you're looking for girls to just date who are to have their pussy eaten, sit on your face or whatever it is. But it's hard to just find a girl who will sit on your face after one Tinder date, you know? Yeah, and I've, now I've gotten to the point where I put it on my Tinder profile. Like if I, if I swipe with a girl and she swipes back and, you know, I match with a girl, it's because she, you know, I know that she, I already put that filter out there, but now the, the matches are few and far between. Well, then maybe you take that all, look, you got to realize sometimes, sometimes women, women are as perverted as we are, but sometimes they just want to know that they're not being looked at like a total whore. Like for men, like we always want that way out. Like I mean, we've talked before about people who like, who are going to fight when two guys argue in a bar, what the fuck, what the fuck, and they're chest to chest. A lot of times those guys don't want to fight, but they're already in an argument and they want a way out that's face-saving. Like one of them wants to go like, all right, dude, I don't want to go to jail. And they both want to be able to walk away without looking like total pussies. So for a woman, sometimes for her just to fuck you and be dirty, a lot of times they want that, that way out, which means the face-saving thing, which is, okay, this guy doesn't just want to fuck me or this guy wants to actually talk to me and, you know, and it's okay if I don't do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like... They're willing yeah. to do it, but they want to know that you're not just looking at them like they're some piece of meat pig. Um, you know, they want to have some respect from you. So, you know, a lot of times, dude, you can't just expect a girl to want to just sit on your face all willy-nilly. 
Yeah, no, it's, uh, I guess I got to put in a little bit of the extra work. But, yeah, uh, thanks. <clears throat> I get the instinct to want that, but you know, yeah, you got to put in some work, dude. Come on, we all do. Yeah, no. Thanks, Even me, yeah, for Pete's sake. All right, good luck. Thanks. All right, let's see here. Uh, Jim in Long Island, you're the new girl and you can't blow a load, huh? Yeah, hey, Jim. Hello, my friend. <laughs> great, seen you a bunch of times, love your stuff. Thank you. Okay, great. 52 years old. I, I kind of haven't been, well, I've been with girls, but not as steady for quite a couple of years. Okay. I ran into this one, and she's the shit. You know what I'm saying? She's sure. she's the girl. She's a she's a great girl and everything. When we got together, the first night I I couldn't even get it up, and then a couple of nights later got it up and came. And now for the last three times I can get it up, but I can't fucking shoot my load. All right, hold on. You're with this new girl. How long have you been with her? About ten days. Now, who's the last girl that made you come? Uh that was probably two months ago. Uh this girl. Did you, do you really want to fuck her? Oh, you have no idea, man. <clears throat> okay, because Absolutely. what happens is, what happens is, sometimes as men we think we're supposed to want to fuck somebody when we're not ready. Like, you could look at her, right, and go like, oh man, she's hot, but maybe you're a little scared to fuck or a little nervous, or maybe you just want to hug her and be affectionate first. Not at you, all. I'm, okay. a, I'm, a confident, I'm a confident guy. I know how to use it. I think this girl's gorgeous, and this could be a long-term relationship. I'm just having an issue downstairs. But that doesn't all, and you might just be right. But just because you're confident, you had a big dick or whatever, it doesn't mean I you don't always, have a big dick. It doesn't I mean you I had a big dick. Okay, whatever. But it doesn't mean you always <laughs> want to fuck. That's the the point I'm making. Is look, you could be right. Maybe it's just a physical thing. But usually, with blowing a load, from what you're telling me, at first you couldn't get it up, and then you can't have this. It's a mental thing. So it's probably a performance anxiety thing, whether you know it or not, or it's the fact that maybe she doesn't turn you on as much as you want her to in this moment. Like sometimes with us, we have a beautiful girl, but yet she doesn't do that thing that the girl who was only a six did, like snap our nipple really hard or whatever the fuck it is. You know, like we all have these things, like men forget that we have conditions too. Like, women all have conditions. Well, I want you to be a nice guy. You better treat me right. You better take me out. And I want. They have conditions usually before they'll throw their pussy at you, and we accept that. Men have conditions too, but we think that if we feel that way, we're fucking little pussies or there's something wrong with us. So maybe that's what it is. Um, it doesn't sound like it's physical, right? Well, you know, I mean, I do have high blood pressure that's under control. Okay. I mean, it could, it could absolutely certainly be that because I'm actually going to go to the doctor and have all that crap looked at because, okay. again, we get along great. She is like, you know, to, to, for lack of a better word, is the bee's knees. You've said it a million times. You well, know hold on. I mean? When you jerk off, can you come? I have. Yeah. It, it just seems to be a little short. You know what I, you know, I, yeah. I mean, but I could, you know, you could, and you know, as a guy, you could jerk, you could come with a half a rod. Yes, because a lot of times I'm jerking off to escape or for the wrong reasons. I'm not necessarily right. doing. See, we convince right. ourselves we're horny sometimes when we're not. Right. That's Absolutely. what it's for me. And, that's and what and it's being been. inside of a vagina is totally different than having a. You're not going to blow a load of a half a rod. You, you barely get it in a vagina. Do you watch a lot of porn? No, I, I'm done with porn. Okay. I mean, like, since I met this girl, I've never even thought of looking at porn. Um, well, is there anything <laughs> you want throw, her to I, do? Huh? Is there anything you want her to do? That she's not I, doing no, sexually? I, she's, she's willing to do anything. That's the problem. That doesn't matter. Is there anything you want her to do that you've been afraid to ask her? Not really. Hmm. Not re No, not really. I mean, I, I just... Again, I, I'm not really you know, crying about it. I'm just thinking, sure. what, what do you think? You know what I mean? Well, again, I, I know. I, I, it's hard to say. I think it's a performance anxiety thing or you're not as horny as you think. She's saying this, she says the same thing. Maybe. It's in my head. You're not. Oh, it probably is. Maybe you're not as ready to fuck her as you thought you were. Maybe you like her and you want to fuck her. But are you good at one night stands or are you good at or do you prefer to be in a long term relationship first? Well, I've been in one night, not one night stands, but like friends with benefits for, for, for quite a few years now. So it was few and far between. I wasn't regularly having sex as in three times a week. I was getting it when I could get it. So you're fucking her and your dick is hard. Is she enjoying it? Oh, my God. Absolutely. Are you enjoying it? I'm enjoying it. But you can't come never, yet. 
and she's not getting mad at, at it. She she knows that we can fix it together, and that's how willing she is. You know. What sometimes, I'm sometimes as a man, it's our way of holding back as well. We um, hold back, like we're not giving everything. We don't want her to have that much control over us. Um, are you wearing rubbers? No. Are you? Is she on the pill? She can't have babies. Oh, okay. So it's not a matter of being afraid of again. She, again, I, again, I won't go back to the age. I am fifty-one, and she's. 47-ish. Oh, okay. Maybe it's a little harder for you to come for that. You know what? I didn't even realize that unless you said it and I just didn't catch I it. I did say it in the beginning. Oh, right? sorry. That's okay. That's, that's absolutely fine. I know you know what? Check with, check with your doctor if it's any of that stuff. Because, uh, again, I, I don't know physical stuff. But to right. me, it sounds like it's in your head and you should just relax. And maybe you could fuck her for a little while then just jerk off while she plays with your balls or whatever and, and bridge to come that way. Uh, it's great talking to you, Jim. I appreciate it. All right. Good luck, man. Thanks. Uh, let's see here. Ty in New Jersey has a question about my joshing around. What's up, Ty? What's up, Jimmy? I know you're big with like the self-deprecating humor on the show, and you, you make fun of your career, and you always say there's a lot of tickets available. And sure. I was just wondering, I've seen you a bunch of times at Caroline. You're always great. You always sell out. I was just wondering how you really gauge your career. Because to me, you're very successful. You're on TV. You're on the radio. You're hilarious. Thank you. So I just wanted beyond the beyond the joking, how you really look at yourself. Uh, in terms of your career. Uh, well, thank you for those compliments. Sir. Uh, you know, it's weird. I go through good days and bad days with it. Like a lot, when, I, when I'm self-deprecating, a lot of times I am just saying that little message that your mind throws at you in, a, in that moment of negativity. And the difference between me and a lot of people is I'm just ver, 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 uh, vocalizing it and a lot of people are not. That's all. Um, it's, right. part, part of it is true. But I, you know, and I really feel that way. And then there's times where I know I'm being irrational. Like I really do know uh, that I have a good career. Uh, you know, again, is it as good as Bill Burr or fucking Kevin? Of course not. Yeah. But is it a lot better than a lot of the guys I knew coming up? Of course. Like I, I've been very lucky compared to the guys that I started with. You know, like a lot of them, 95% of them do not do comedy anymore. The majority of them do not do stand-up anymore. So, in relative comparison, I have an excellent career. Um, you know, I live in a great place. Um, you know what I mean? It's like I could list the great things I have. So, when I, when I focus on the negative, the self-deprecation is real. But a lot of times, the negative is just me being a baby and not having everything. And there are times where I think, Jim, you're just not good enough. And when I think you're not good enough, which we all think from time to time, every comedian especially thinks that, you know, I just... I just uh, uh, vocalize it. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So, it, I, it's hard to say. But I would say the majority of times I'm saying it, it's honest, but it's only honest for that moment. And if I didn't say it, it usually passes anyway. Right. What if like today, today, today I feel pretty grateful. Today I feel pretty grateful. Um, you know, just had a good day. You know, pretty productive. Wednesdays are good because I do this show. I had fun on the air this morning. We, you know, obviously with Opie and a couple of guys uh, coming in. And, uh, you know, I'm going and doing a nice gig in Erie this weekend. Like, it, it, it's fun, dude. It, it, it's a fun life. And I make uh, more money than I ever thought I would make. And, again, I don't make as much as a lot of my contemporaries. I don't make Louis C.K. money. But, you know, if you told me that I'd have the life I'd have now in the beginning, I would have signed up for it uh, in an absolute second. If, if I knew this was as good as it ever was going to get, I would have signed up for less than this the day I started comedy in a second. I always thought... You know you're famous when you go from Newark to Seattle and you sign an autograph in each airport. To me, that was famous. And that's happened. I've taken photos in both airports many times, and it's not enough. It doesn't mean anything. So I realize that you just keep changing it because it's almost like when, you, when, when you're climbing something, the top doesn't look as high anymore. So you've got to keep looking beyond it. Do you know what I mean? It's a good way to set the bar for yourself, too. Yeah, it, it keeps me working. It does keep me working, and it keeps me motivated. But a lot of times it makes me unhappier than I should be. And sometimes I just tell myself, shut up, you little fucking twat, and be grateful. Your career is yeah. great. It's not perfect, <laughs> but Jesus Christ, I have a fun life, man. I have a fun fucking life. You certainly do. What, what does Chip think about your career? Fucking piece of garbage. Sometimes I play the garden and he's out doing eerie Pennsylvania. What is he, eerie and spooky? Fucking. He, and then he's going to the Star Dome in Alabama. Star Dome, he shouldn't be there. He's not a star. <laughs> I'm, I got to just go or I'll riff all day. All right, Jimmy. Piece of garbage. Hang up. 
hang up. From now on, Chip is going to trail his G's into the next letter. Jed in Tennessee, you want to call people out on some bullshit? Hello, Jed. Uh, hey, Jim. It's um, like, excuse the little the fandom jitter uh, jitters. Like you said, you know, you you. Uh, I, I just um, uh, shut up. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so I, I just discovered the Opie and Anthony thing about a couple of a uh, couple of months ago, and and I've just been going through the archives and archives of you guys talking and going back and forth, and I just drive around listening to that twenty four seven because it's just you know something. It's really relatable. It's a really you know what, you know what it is, and um. And I hear all these things of how you and and you guys uh, just go off and call people's bullshit out, and and it's and it's made me, and that's something that I, I I've always liked doing, and but I've been kind of hesitant in doing so. But you guys like kind of reaffirm that that confidence in doing it. But um, and you guys go off on people. Uh, but in my personal life, it's just like I hear somebody talking about their trivial responses. Like you were just talking um, a moment ago. So you're pretending how about sometimes you're down and you're complaining, but you're just like, look what I have now. Well, it's some people like makes like really, really trivial remarks about their life. And it's just like, I just can't um, have that, that, that sympathy or empathy for them because I've become more open. I mean, I'm more, um, I know more about what's going on in the world compared sure. to, compared to this small spot, and I'm a lot. I'm very grateful for everything that I have, and then so I hear them making these like little uh, trivial um, remarks and everything. I'm just like, and they can see it in my face, and I just want to just be like, look, you you realize how how ungrateful you sound to me right now? Like, you just, how old the guy are you? I'm I'm 22. You know what it might be? <clears throat> Part of it is uh, you're 22. You're a young guy. Uh, the right. older we the older we get the more we get stuck in our ways, as we like to say. But calling people out on bullshit, look, man, I'm an entertainer and I'm on the radio. So part of it is my job and it's easy to do. But in real right. life, do we all have limits? Like, you have a boss, I have a boss. Like, can I make fun of Scott Greenstein on the air? Sure. But when Scott, if, I, if Scott called me in for a meeting about something, and again, we haven't had that for any negative shit, right. but like, would I just go, fuck you, dude? No. I wouldn't. Yeah. Or if Jim Meyer said, I got to talk to you about something, look, this thing, I might not agree with him, and I might say, look, I don't agree with you, but I wouldn't go, oh, please, you're full of shit, dude. Like, I'm not a moron. You know, you, right. you no, have no, no, Not with anyone that could, um, not in your personal life, that's someone that you kind of have to, but just the typical uh, in everyday general, person you know. or like. Yeah. I mean, look, dude, it's one of those things where I don't even mind if people bullshit, as long as they're not using their bullshit to punish other people or to put themselves right. above other people. But yeah, it's, 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 it's more tempting now to call people out than it ever was. But right. again, there's more of it that becomes apparent. Like years ago, we wouldn't have seen the video of this cunty professor at Michigan or at Missouri University, whatever it is. Years ago, we wouldn't have gotten to read emails because they didn't exist about the Yale students fighting and getting mad at the teacher who disagreed with them. So the, the more availability of information, the more we're going to get annoyed at it because we just see more bullshit than we ever saw before, okay? Right, right, right. And, okay, yeah, and that, yeah, that kind of clears it up. But in like, uh, just like, and, and to give you an example of what I meant to, to paint the picture more is like, um, like for instance, I had a lady who was a customer or a person, and she was just complaining about how her day was ruined because the housekeeper wasn't going to be able to, to to clean the house that day, and she really needed to clean. And it was just like that was really the worst of her concerns. And I just wanted to be like, oh, I fucking hate you, your guts, you know, you, blah blah. Because I'm also like starting to do a, a stand up thing, so it's like it's already in my personality, and I'm not sure the balance of how to use it in my personal life. Like, I wasn't sure it, how you were. Well, in your personal life, do look. You do it for where it makes sense to do it. You know, you, right. again, I'm not some rebel asshole running through my life <laughs> and causing a scene, you know. Yeah. Um, so whatever. I got to run, dude, because we had a bunch of calls. But good luck with the stand-up. And, and, you know, again, use your intelligence. You know, I, I, I'm smart about it. Um, there's ways to call people out on their bullshit too. You know, you don't have to argue to somebody and go, "You're full of shit." Sometimes you can just give your own point of view, and hopefully they'll see it your way, right? Right, right, and, and be kind of um, hinting to it, but not really saying it um, yeah. directly. Yeah. All right, buddy. Thank you, man. I really appreciate everything you do, man. Thank you. Keep it up. Appreciate. It. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Ed in Baltimore. I was kind of thinking this, which is why I said he might not be as attracted to her in that moment. You think? What do you think, Ed? Hey, uh, Jimmy. How you doing? Good, um, first, I saw you at McGooby's last winter. Fantastic. Thank you, you did man. a little, you did a little Uncle Paul riff, which freaking went uh -huh. went crazy. But Good. but anyway, yeah, that guy about the fifty two year old who said he he's now with this chick that he couldn't quite do anything with, 
And that's, that's classic Madonna whore syndrome. Do you know what I mean? Because he was like, he goes, she's hot, she's this, she's ready to do anything. And the minute she wants to do it, he he backs off and he can't get wood. That's classic Madonna whore. Do you know what I mean? Don't you think? You know, it, it can be, but not necessarily. It can be other stuff. It can be a girl who you really like who just isn't doing what you want her to do, or you could have conditions that you like to feel more comfortable with a person before you fuck them. It might yeah. not be Madonna whore. It could be, but that kind of could... Thinking, f- yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you. The only reason I thought that is because the, the one classic line he said was, oh, man, she's ready to do anything at any time, and then he loses his wood. And that's why I thought, okay, that's, that's, that's what made me think that. Do you know what I mean? Could be, but not uh, d- necessarily. But that's a good point. You know, who knows? All right? All right, thanks, Jimmy. All right, okay. goodbye, you little sweetie. Uh, let's see here. How about Michelle in Alabama? Hey, Jimmy. Hey. Um, there's this guy at work that I've kind of been fooling around with a little bit off and on. We're both married. Um, well, if he's your husband, it's okay. Yeah, no, it's not. Well, oh, he's not your husband. He's another, someone else's husband. Someone else's husband. I was just joking. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But um, we haven't really, we haven't gone away, little jobs, that kind of thing. And he's almost hesitant to, and he said it a few times. He doesn't remember his marriage. I've said that too. Neither one of us want that. We're just fooling around. It's just straight sex. It's not nothing that is going to mess up our relationships. Sure. Of course. Hold on. Of course, straight sex will wreck up your relationships. Two, a couple of ways. Yeah. One. When you're actively lying to somebody you're with, you begin acting suspicious and you right. begin changing and you begin resenting them because there's times where you want to go fuck the new person, but you can't because the husband showed up at work or whatever it is. You got to go to lunch with the husband, whatever the deal. So you start acting shitty towards your partner because you're living a lie. You begin to cover your phone a certain way whenever a text comes in. You begin to look over your shoulder to see you begin to get suspicious. So it does affect the marriage and the spouses do notice. And now everything is saved. Email, text messages, location services. Eventually people eventually get caught. Yeah, I'm just, I, I need to just stop it and let it go, don't I? Well, I mean, look, I'm not being a holy roller, but if you're married to somebody, if you want to fuck the marriage up, go ahead. But if you don't, if it's just sex, then you're for a quick thrill, this guy who doesn't want to fuck, he's going, let's not do it, might be saving you so much more of a headache. He might be doing you such a favor. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I see what you mean. It just, it, both my husband and I are both pretty open that, you know... If the cases come up, yeah, okay, as long as we're not, it's sex. It's going to be, you know, I'm always his, he's, he's always mine, we're in it, we're in our marriage. At, and But if we want something on the side, okay, you know, it's cool. Wait, you and your husband have an agreement? Too boring, yeah. Oh, okay, well, it's that's a little different. Been, it's never been fulfilled because we haven't, we haven't had that opportunity yet. Right. But I've had that, I'm starting to have that opportunity and just seeing if I should... Well, if you I'm guys have that agreement, how would it fuck your marriage up? Yeah, I'm not worried about mine. You worry about his marriage? It's it's his that he's and he and I both said it's straight sex. I mean, he's more concerned about all of it. I'm trying to get it to him that no. I'm well, then not why don't you let him? If, if he's telling you that, sweetheart, if he's telling you that, listen to him. Maybe his wife is more suspicious than he's letting on. Yeah. Listen to him and respect his wishes, and say, uh, you know. Okay, we won't do it. You know, maybe maybe it will fuck your marriage up more than you thought. Um, you know. But do I cut it off completely? Because, I mean, he's still coming home saying, hey, how you doing? With, you know, starting little shit up, but then stops it at a point. Well. So do I string it along and keep enjoying that much? or <laughs> Is it uncomfortable for you to do that? No. It's more aggravating. It's like being cock-blocked, basically, you know. Well, if it's not uncomfortable, that's one thing. But if it's uncomfortable for you to him to keep, like, dibbing and dabbing in, just go, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. Okay. But I would listen. Uh, I would listen to his signals. If he's saying, look, I'm worried about my marriage, then just respect that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's good. I mean, if And he... leave him alone. Yeah. All right, just play with your badge thinking about him. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, thanks. All right. Lenny in Buffalo... 
Hello, Lenny. I'm calling because, you know, my husband is a, a severe alcoholic. He okay. drinks like a 12 pack of beer every day and he's just sipping on liquor the whole time. And the past few years, he's introduced cocaine into the mix now as well. Um, and I've tried giving him ultimatums where, you know, this needs to stop or I'm leaving. And he talks me all out of it every time, but I'm, I'm really at the point now where I, I can't do it anymore. And I, I mean, I love him a whole lot, but I, I can't keep living my life like this. So I, I just don't know what to do. Well, you've talked to him. Is he willing to do anything? Mm, not really. I mean, he, he, he agrees that it's a problem, but he won't make any change. Um, well, then maybe you can start going to, there's 12-step programs for people who live with alcoholics. I've never been to Al-Anon, but I've heard about it. Have you tried that? No, I, no, I haven't. I mean, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed about it myself to, to talk about it with people. Well, they're all people who are in the same situation. That's yeah. like being embarrassed about being a woman, but you're going into a place where there's all women. Or that's like you're being embarrassed about being a dwarf, but everyone in the room is a dwarf. Like, you know what I mean? Like, or, or whatever right. your case, case is. Everyone there is the same. So embarrassed, by the way, is also just a way of keep your, you know, our minds keep us in these fucking unhealthy situations sometimes. And being embarrassed, wouldn't you rather be, uh, deal with it and be a little happier than be alone in this fear of an embarrassment that you haven't even felt yet? Right. That would be my suggestion. Try something like that. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Good luck, buddy. John in Tennessee, I haven't heard this one. What's up, John? Hey, Jimmy. How are you doing this afternoon? Good. How are you? I'm good. First of all, I'm going to see you in Birmingham for the first time. Looking forward to it. Right. Looking forward to the show. Awesome. Yeah. Um, about a year ago, I, I came up with this. Um, they call it a disease, but it's basically uh, I had an injury to my dick and it the cartilage around the base of it causes it to be all fucked up and it's bent at the Which end of the day it said, yeah it's bent I can left or right or up i'm sorry did it go left or right in a weird way or does it just curve up a little bit straight up curve straight up towards my belly butt and okay. went to the doctor about it there's really not a lot of treatments tried one there's a uh a shot that they can give that's about a 70% chance, but I'm a little leery of it. And the point to this is I've been married for 23 years, got a great marriage, but it's really starting to affect our sex life because we can't, I can't fuck her. Um, it's just the way that it's positioned. We've tried every different, every different position under the sun. So, you know, for the last year, we've had to come up with different ways to pleasure each other, and that's fine. You know, I, Wait, why can't you fuck her if your dick is just curved up? Because of the, the positioning, I mean, whether she's on top, behind, I mean, with like, it's like the fucking Kama Sutra, we've tried everything. It's because it's so, it's bent so far up that I can't get it in and keep it in. It hurts? It, yeah, it's painful. And there's nothing so, you can do about that, huh? Nothing I can do. And it's, you know, she says she's been great. You know, I, we, I please her in other ways. We, she's got a toy, you know, I, I eat her pussy. She has to keep her. I mean, it's still everything still works, but I mean, it's like I just feel I feel shitty because I feel like I'm missing out on pleasuring her. Number one and number two, I'm aggravated as hell because I can't do what I want to do. And it, number one, it's embarrassing. So thank you for letting me talk about it. Um, and I just don't know what the hell to do. I mean, do I go try this shot that they say is extremely painful and it's only a seventy to 75% chance that it's going to work to break that cartilage up. I mean, what... What, what, uh, what are the side effects of the shots? Um, redness and pain and swelling, and those are the three main ones. Um, but and they, don't, they won't do permanent damage if they don't work. No. Is it called... Uh, I just As we and I are talking, I just put in the computer, bent penis... Yeah, and is it, it is it uh, Peroni's disease or Peroni's disease? Yeah, it's Peroni's disease. Did you see some pictures? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at a drawing right now, and uh, the New York urology specialist they say here's what they hold on. They say a curved penis. Call us. Where are you located? Uh, I am in Tennessee. Well, maybe you can find uh, you know a, a urologist or call the New York one. It may be worth a trip up. How long are you supposed to be doing those uh, those uh, shots for? Um, I think it's a series of four shots over the course of, I think you do one every two weeks. Well, 
do you want to try? Why not try the shots? Because if it's not going to do any permanent damage, if it doesn't work, right. then it's worth the pain. It's worth yeah, it. Yeah, and I, I want to do it. My wife, she said, you know, don't do it if you don't if you don't think it. If you know, don't. She left it up to me. Do it if you want to do it. And I just, you know, I just it's aggravating as hell because I'm 48 years old. I shouldn't be having to deal with this shit, but it is what it is. And you don't have penile cancer. That could be. That's yeah. a lot worse. You don't yeah. have a. There's a lot worse shit you can. Uh, well, that's true. Can do that stinks. How'd you break it? I think with some rough sex. You know, when you're fucking, a lot of times you'll hit the. You know, you'll hit like the pelvis bone, or you'll hit the bone right there. I think. Um, do you remember when it happened? No, I don't. Um, it's that's happened to me a few times, and it was probably one of those times, and it just circumvented into this day freaking grotesque thing that i gotta look at now and it's it's just it just sucks <laughs> yeah that does absolutely um but still you don't you don't want to have to put up with that um but again it could be a lot worse dude right i understand i'll probably just go in and get go in and get the shot you know and, and like i said three out of four that's you know shit that's not bad i'm gonna take those chances i just needed someone else to tell me that that maybe to tr go try and do that yeah, good luck, man. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Take care. Uh, bye. Fucking curved Pekka. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Joe in South Carolina. What's up, Joe? How do you do, Joe? Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Good. Uh, listen, I've been doing uh, for a little bit now, and uh, for about three years. Okay. And, um, like... I'm graduating. There's a good scene down here. It's awesome. Really good. But I don't know if I want to go back to New Jersey and then go to New York or, like, you know, maybe go to Atlanta or, you know, L.A. I mean, I don't know. Well, that's just a decision you have to make. I mean, there's no one that can really help you with that. Like, okay, there's, like, uh, comics, like, that I've talked to. Like, uh, I got to open up for, like, T.J. Miller. I'm not trying to fucking drop names here, but. Yeah, like, I like T.J. Yeah, and, and a lot of, and I met, uh, Pete Davidson too, real cool fucking guy. And, um, they all told me to, like, start, you know, go to, like, one of those satellite cities and, like, you know, kind of, like, get going there before you jump into, like, New York or LA. Well, I mean, do you think that your stuff is good? I mean, I do. I think I got, like, a lot better from, like, when I came down here and, like, started doing comedy, like, fucking four nights a week compared to, like, back home when, like, I did, like, you know, once a week, if that. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, dude, I, I don't know. What kind of job do you do during the day? Uh, what kind of family attachment do you have there? I don't. You have to consider all that stuff. That's true. That's true, man. But, I mean, uh, by the way, I saw you in Charlotte. Absolutely fucking crushed it. Uh, that's you. another place, like, I go up, and uh, they got, like, a good scene. I mean, I don't know. I got a girlfriend who's, like, completely on board with whatever I want to do. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe doing Atlanta and maybe – you know, stay in there and shit. Well, I give guess. it a shot. Give it a shot. Atlanta, Boston, there's a lot of great places for stand-up. Or just move to New Jersey and start coming into New York. True, true. I got to go in three minutes, buddy. I got to run, okay? But good luck either way. Thank you, man. Take care. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mike in Florida, active Army recruiter. Hello? Hi, buddy. Hello? Hello? Hi, Mike. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yeah. My name's Glenn. I apologize. Oh, hi, Glenn. Hey, I'm a recruiter in uh, Florida. I'm active duty. I just wanted to uh, thank you a lot, Jim. Uh, you, your show makes me laugh. You make me laugh, not your show. Uh, I really appreciate what you do. And I am active duty. I've been in the Army for about 15 years. And I can't thank you enough. I'm oh, thank you. Absolutely. It's really nice of you. I appreciate that. And, uh, hey, man, uh, you know, congratulations. I thank you for, for doing what you do. I mean, I, military guys always fascinate me. It's just something. It's a decision I could never make. So thank you too, buddy. I appreciate it. I really appreciate your hard work, man. Thank you thank very Thank you much. so much, man. Thank you for uh, you guys defend my right to be a douche. So I do appreciate that. <laughs> all the guys with guns are the ones who who would defend my right to fucking say all the jackass stuff I say. So I appreciate it. All right. You're hilarious, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Uh, let's see here. Steve might have some advice for the guy with a bent dick. Hey, Jim. Hi. So this guy with the uh, bent pecker. He has to call Dr. Steve. Yeah, he probably should. Yeah. What's that? 
Yeah, fuck okay, fluid. <laughs> yeah, when your penis is bent, sometimes it's a lot of do. Is you just gotta stand around the corner and fuck her around the corner, uh, or a lot of times you can hang your suit jacket on it. But yeah, I guess Doctor Steve would be more qualified. But I think you yeah, should just he, call he, a urologist. Sorry. Um, yeah, he he's in Tennessee. He talks about it all the time on his show. So I yeah. think he would. Well, I think he's. I think he he hates a bent penis, Doctor Steve. He said because it bothers his tonsils. So I think that's why he talks about it so much. He doesn't like it because it, he's. He, it makes him feel like he's gonna vomit. I think that's his problem. All right. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, Kevin in North Carolina has a, wants to ask a question about stand up writing. What's up, buddy? Hey, Jimmy, I love you. Thank um, you just by the way, you, you're hilarious. You told a guy with a bent penis it could be worse. Well, so, I was uh, saying, like, you could have cancer, or you know what I mean? Like, there, there are things that are worse than that, even though that's bad. I mean, you know, uh, so you just deal with it. It's just funny. Um, listen, I, I saw you in Charlotte. You're fucking amazing. And you came out, and you, you kind of apologized, like, you had new material, so you had all these notes in your hand, which you never looked at. Yeah. And, you, I mean, you just nailed all new material. I just saw your last special. Like, what's on that paper? What, 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 is it a comfort for you to have it? Well, it's no, it's an order. I have a certain order. So what I do was I pretty much. What show did you come to? Thursday night. Okay, because I did Friday night pretty much the same way, and then the Friday late show I did almost in reverse. So I mixed up the order a lot and changed the order. So a lot of times it's just if I feel stuck, I like to have it there as a comfort because I want to be able to go back and do... I, I pretty much remember a lot of it, but I've been still toying with the order, and that's how it is with these shows. I work out in the Comedy Cellar, and I do so much... Uh, I do, like, different 15-minute sets there, and then all of a sudden I get a bunch of 15-minute sets, and I try to mix it up. And sometimes I want to just... If I want to just punch some energy into the set, I just... I fucking flip the order upside down, and it helps me have a new energy and focus. i got to run, buddy, because we got to wrap, but thank you so much. All right, you're awesome, man. And I have uh, pre-sale tickets are on sale for Birmingham, Alabama for January and New Year's Eve in uh, Rhode Island. Those will probably both sell out. So go to, uh, oh, God, what's it called? The Star something. Go to my Twitter and my Facebook page. You can see the links. Uh, but I want, to, I, I want these tickets sold. The pre-sale code is Norton. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to The Jim Norton Show. 